Kuru was a new disease that was killing lots of people and was a complete mystery. Welcome back to PNG Trends Burner. Today we're diving into a bizarre and somewhat spooky topic that's been used loosely in the US. It's cannibalism and Kuru disease and some wild accusations involving none other than Hillary Clinton and Kamala Harris. So, what's the deal with Kuru? Kuru means brain in Tokpizin. Kuru translates to brain disease, a rare fatal neurodegenerative disorder classified as a transmissible spongiform encephalopathy. It's caused by prions misfolded proteins that induce abnormal folding of normal prion proteins in the brain, leading to neurodegeneration. Historically, Kuru was endemic among the tribal 4A people of Eastern Highlands Province, Papua New Guinea. It was primarily transmitted through ritualistic cannibalism in the 1950s and 1960s, where individuals consumed the brain tissue of deceased relatives during funerary rites. This practice facilitated the transmission of prions, leading to the disease. The disease has an incubation period of 5 to 50 years, but the symptom manifests in stages, beginning with headaches, joint pain, and slight motor coordination difficulties. It progresses to severe ataxia, tremors, muscle jerks, and emotional instability, such as uncontrollable laughter. In its late stages, Kuru results in complete physical incapacitation, severe difficulty swallowing, and dementia. Ultimately, it leads to death within a year of symptom onset. Diagnosis is challenging and typically confirmed post-mortem through the detection of prion proteins in brain tissue. Now, onto the juicy part. Recently, some conspiracy theorists have been claiming that Kamala Harris is laughing uncontrollably because of Kuru disease. Seriously, what are they eating? Let's get real for a second. The claims are political by nature and hold no truth. Kuru is not something you can catch from a bad joke or a political debate. It's a serious disease with a tragic history. It's understandable that historical practices like cannibalism can lead to lasting stigmas. Here is a video of a research into the Kuru disease. Kuru was a major problem. They had an explanation for it. It was, it was, a, it was a very powerful sorcery, and this was accepted by the cases. Uh, people all throughout the, the Eastern Highlands. Um, uh, a lot of people from Goroka are afraid to go to Okapa, anywhere in Okapa, because the people from Okapa were very powerful sorcerers. There were huge public gatherings uh, to put an end to this catastrophe that was devastating the population. <laughs> Sorcery and many of the other animistic belief systems are based on what people experience in a practical sense and then make up a story to reconcile their world with what they see and, and what's happening to them. Whereas in science we're often counterintuitive and we're going in the abstract sort of ways. So often the education is the other way to try and make people believe in things they don't see. Today, the foreign Okapa people no longer practice cannibalism. Importantly, Kuru disease, once prevalent in the area, is now extinct. By providing accurate, up-to-date information about the four people's history and current practices, we can help dispel harmful myths. Travel can be a powerful tool for breaking down stereotypes. Visiting PNG 
and engaging with local communities can provide outsiders with a more nuanced understanding of the culture and its history. PNG is a diverse country with rich cultural traditions and a vibrant community life. Every Papua New Guinean should be proud of the diverse cultures and traditions that their ancestors practiced retold through generations. But hey, US politicians are human too, and sometimes they laugh at the most unexpected moments. That does not mean they have the Kuru disease. So, what's the takeaway here? It is better to have a global perspective of cultural practices when making references. Cannibalism and the Kuru disease are thing of the past. Don't forget to subscribe for more trending content.